Hey folks, across the vast kingdom of Hyrule lies many mysteries. From small and easily solvable ones such as the voice down the well near the Highland stable, or who stole the entire Heiteno cheese stock to make pizza with, I do wonder. But there are also some very big mysteries that are still unsolved, whether it be a case of us knowing half the story, but not the rest, or not knowing the story entirely. Zelda games are well known for their creative environmental storytelling, the world lore, and all the mysteries that come with these aspects. In today's video, we are going to look at five of the biggest unsolved mysteries that the latest installment, Tears of the Kingdom, has to offer. And it goes without saying that this video will contain spoilers. With that said, be sure to go and grab yourself a tasty snack or drink, and let's explore the world of Tears of the Kingdom's Unsolved Mysteries. Dragon culture and lore is a massive part of this game's story. We learn through the memories that swallowing a Zonai secret stone will turn that person into a dragon. It's considered a forbidden act, at least in the time frame which Princess Zelda is sent back to, despite Zelda doing it herself in order to restore the Master Sword and ultimately save Hyrule. However, what this new lore presents us with is a very big question surrounding the three dragons we saw in Breath of the Wild, and once again in Tears of the Kingdom. Nadra, Farosh, and Dinral are three elemental dragons whose names all reference the three golden goddesses, Nehru, Ferori, and Din. It's been theorised and speculated in the past that these are incarnations of the goddesses, but this new lore adds more to the story. They all take on the same style of dragon as Princess Zelda when she turns into the Light Dragon. The same goes for Ganondorf as well. Slender, noodle-style dragons. We can come to a fairly safe assumption that this means these three dragons were once people who ate secret stones as well. But the mystery here is, who exactly were these three individuals? Were they THE Golden Goddesses? Perhaps people who worshipped them highly? Or maybe something else we don't know? We know that at some point in time, there was a place of worship for specifically the three Golden Goddesses. We find three small buildings in front of the Temple of Time, which contain the symbols of the Golden Goddesses, in the correct formation of the Triforce as well. Din for power at the top, Nehru on the left for wisdom, and Furore on the right for courage. We don't know the exact culture behind how these buildings were used, but given their association with the Temple of Time which would have been used to worship the goddess Hylia, it's very possible these were also for worship. I bring this up because I don't feel that it is a certainty that these dragons were once mortal forms of THE Golden Goddesses. We don't even know if mortal forms were around back in the time frame of ancient Hyrule. I'm not saying it's not, I'm just saying we can't say that for sure. For all we know, it was three individuals at the helm of worshipping that swallowed the stones, almost embodying the goddesses. If it were the goddesses themselves, then why would the act have been forbidden at some point? There is just so much we don't know about this that we cannot say anything for sure. It's a cracking mystery alright, and one we may never know the full answer to. The Zonai were arguably one of, if not the most anticipated parts of Tears of the Kingdom, especially when not far off from release during a gameplay demonstration, the word Zonai was revealed by an item drop. The fandom went wild. The mystery of Faron's barbaric tribe was theorised about in insane depth. Fellow Zelda creator Nintendo Black Crisis has made some very, very amazing videos about the Zonai. I'll link them below if you want to check them out. So many were surprised to find out that the Zonai are not barbaric at all. Their architecture is also very different to what we saw in Breath of the Wild. It's as if Nintendo ignored the foundations they set down for this group and just did something new without connecting the original to the new. However, there are some very mysterious things in Tears of the Kingdom regarding this. Just outside the entrance to the Construct Factory, we see this half-broken piece of Zonai architecture. The core appears to be made from the pristine, newer Zonai designs, but increased by the more rough and barbaric designs we first saw. What does this mean? Was there both a barbaric Zonai tribe and a more civilised group? 
Or is this the work of the same Zonai, but just in different time periods? King Raru of the Zonai doesn't shed any light on this, nor does his sister Minoru, so we're kind of in the dark regarding it. An interesting thing to note specifically about the architecture is that Typhlo ruins, which we originally thought were built by the Zonai, were actually Hylian built. We learn this by reading the stone tablet below the ruins. It was built following King Raru sealing Ganondorf, meaning the Hylians built this style for at least here. But if this was built in honour of King Raru's sacrifice, surely they'd base it off the pristine Zonai architecture seen in this time frame. So are the Hylians responsible for this design? Or perhaps that they just base it off an already existing design, such as the Zonai Ruins of Pharaon. Maybe it was easier to build. It could also be a case of long before the Zonai we see in Zelda's time in the past, back in the prime of the Zonai, that this was their architecture style. But then that wouldn't make sense in this case because that style's built over this one. It's all quite confusing, and with time that means it would have developed into a more pristine design, which then doesn't make even more sense. This would also imply that back in the prime of the Zonai, or possibly before their prime, that they were a barbaric tribe as originally described. This could all just be a case of we only knew part of their history and have now learned more. There is honestly so much we don't know about Zonai culture throughout their years. This is one of many mysteries about them which we will probably never know the full story of. Shiga Tech was essentially thrown out the window for Zonai Tech with the release of Tears of the Kingdom. Well, apart from the new Shika Towers, the Pura Pad, and of course some bits and bobs. However, the Divine Beasts, Original Towers, and Guardians are all gone. Nobody in the game explains where they went or why they're gone. It wasn't until a recent developer interview that we got a sort of answer. We were basically told that it just disappeared and the people of Hyrule don't know why. The apparent reason is that it had served its purpose, so it just vanished. This is very likely just an on-the-spot answer and not something thought out to consider the actual lore. If we take this overly serious and overthink the in-game lore, then what is the reason for this? The Shika Tech lore is inconsistent. If the answer truly is that it vanished due to serving its purpose, then why can we still find ancient arrow pieces to fuse with? Surely they've now served their purpose. Why have they not vanished as well? There isn't much room to dive deeper here as we simply just don't have a solid answer to explain the inconsistencies. This would also mean that the Guardian which sits atop the Hiteno Tech Lab isn't even a real Guardian. It has to be a model, or else it would have just disappeared, right? It's an unsolved mystery, yes, but more so just really inconsistent. But hey, at least we're not going to get jump scared by you know what. <laughs> I got you guys. The ancient hero's identity is a bit of a mystery. First seen depicted on the ancient tapestry which shows us the tale of the first great calamity. The royal princess alongside a warrior chosen by the master sword fought off a great evil. However, we don't know the true identity of this ancient hero. They don't take on the typical hero appearance we're used to with Link in his many incarnations. This hero appears green and with long red hair. In Tears of the Kingdom, you can gain an armour piece called the Ancient Hero's Aspect by completing every single Zonai Shrine. The description of this says it contains the spirit of a hero who once saved Hyrule, and that the wearer will be involved by the hero's aura. When wearing it, Link's appearance changes drastically. He now has green skin, long red hair, and a very Zonai heavy look to him. Whoever this hero was appears to have been Zonai, or at least connected to them in some way. It also perfectly matches the hero depicted on the tapestry. But who exactly is this? Is it a former hero by the name of Link? Or somebody else entirely, who at their time of life carried the spirit of the hero? We don't know, and yet again, nobody like Raru really hints at who this is. 
It's a bit short and sweet, but undoubtedly one of the most intriguing mysteries to talk about. I mean, was his name even Link? It could have been anything. Perhaps someday in the future we will play through a game which has us play as this hero, or maybe meet this hero. For now, it remains unsolved. The final unsolved mystery of today's video takes us back to the very beginning of the game. This adventure opens up with us discovering the sealed corpse of Ganondorf, an ancient evil king who in ancient Hyrule during the era of the kingdom's founding was sealed by King Raru. This was a very long time ago in relation to the modern day. Over the many, many years between Hyrule's founding and the events we play through, Ganondorf has been down here, deep below Hyrule Castle. But if he was sealed during the era of Hyrule's founding, why do we see Ganondorf appear in games such as Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess and The Wind Waker? Games in which Hyrule is already a well-established kingdom. Well, there is the suggestion that this era of founding, as it's officially called in-game, is actually the re-founding of Hyrule, placing the previously mentioned games, which Ganondorf appears in long before these events, in the original Hyrule if you will. That is a strong possibility, but if you want to look at it based solely on what we're told in game, then it isn't as easy to say that. Another idea I've heard is that perhaps this situation is like if a candle wick had two lit ends, both burning, but on different ends. As if the Ganondorf down here can still create an embodiment of his true self to present on the surface. However, there isn't enough to truly prove that idea, and thus this does remain as a very interesting, yet unsolved mystery. Those are five of the biggest unsolved mysteries in Tears of the Kingdom. Do you think you know the answer to any, or perhaps have a mystery you'd like to share? Then leave a comment below, I'd love to hear them all. A massive thank you goes to my awesome channel supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you'd like to help back the channel and these videos, then consider becoming a supporter via the links below. My socials are also down there if you'd like to keep up to date with me. P.S. Join the Discord server. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day or night, and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer. <laughs>